It's like the new Texas hot spot. It's, it's so what's happening now. It's, it's you know what I'm saying. It's where it's a hustler's paradise. Having a child as a senior parent, growing up with him was good, and we had our days. Yellow will fight, and I used to pick him up. And I'm not a ghetto grandparent, but uh, I would get out there and honey, yeah, I look through the rearview mirror, and if I saw my grandson, I was doing that thing. This little pinky right here is kind of like being like that, hey, cause I was here fighting. Yeah, he didn't do nothing but fight. That right, I'm on. Hey, you be Oak Cliff. It's a hood, but it, it's it's where you know it's grimy. You know that's where a lot of cats get to that money. At, you know what I'm saying? A lot of people from Dallas. You know you got certain every West Dallas, Oak Cliff, Pleasant Grove, and Oak Cliff was really one of the cities in Dallas that stands out the most. You know what I'm saying? A lot of rappers can't go back to the hood, man. This man right here got a lot of respect, man. He do for the community. With the the fashion, with cash making the paper, and you know, the whips and the women, all that there, you know. Ooh, Oak Cliff is, that's the hood. It ain't no neighborhood where you can just be like, yeah, I'm from there, you know what I'm saying? Everybody know everybody, really. Even like the niggas that come over here and hustle and shit. It ain't no popular hood that motherfucker just claim like that, you know what I'm saying? So the ones that stick out, niggas don't know that, you feel me? Right here, this the how when my daddy got killed that. I was 12. I was 12. It was on Mother's Day, I was 12. I was I was turning 13 that October. I just remember we pulled up from like the back way and my mama parked the car like kind of like where the um where that orange little cone thing is right there and shit. And she was like, something happened to your daddy. So I kinda I woke up, you know what I'm saying? And when I woke up, like it was like a lot of motherfucking people out here. I don't know, like, he ain't had no shoes on. So I don't know if the gun knocked his shoes off or, or what, but he, he was taking the snake in the half. He was taking the snake in the half. I guess nigga crept up behind and hit him up. And like, he was like laying, I think he, they say he was laying like on his back with his legs up type shit. The snake was still like around him. I think they had to call like a, a pet thing or whatever, the little pet people or whatever, cause I guess the snake wouldn't let nobody touch him or some shit. This motherfucker boarded up now though. I don't even think nobody ever stayed in this house after this. Motherfucker boarded up though. Like all this shit. That what, that what made us move from around this area. My mom wasn't trying to hear that shit no more. I be replaying that night in my head like all the motherfucking time. It's like my first time ever just getting out at this motherfucker since then. Really, like the, the music was secondary because I was good at sports. Like, I was real good at football and basketball, like, special football. I thought really I, I wanted to go pro in football. Came on my first CD, I was 13, but like, for actually just getting my big shot at, that's when I was like 26. And I've been grinding since I was 13 with it, like, real hard. You could tell he was gonna do something singing or rapping. I didn't think it was gonna be rapping, I thought it was gonna be singing. I think BZ kind of got kind of frustrated because it wasn't like going as fast as he wanted to do. And I used to always tell him, don't give up, you got this, you got this, keep going. Well, at first it was kind of like exciting, then it got kind of scary. And because every time we used to go out, people would say, if I be with my daughter, they would say, that's yellow mother. Like when I first heard it on the radio, I'm talking about I was driving. I almost wrecked that because, you know, hearing your son on the radio, that's amazing. The, the street selected trapping design, and it kind of, when it took off for him. Trap and Zana, though, I think that was like 2014, 2015, something like that. Talking about what I was living, like we was, like in Dallas, it's a fashion city. So like, the girls want the niggas that's dressing fly. Like, 
Niggas feel like if he ain't wearing this or he ain't wearing that, he ain't got no money. You get what I'm saying? So it's like a big fashion show. And niggas was really hustling out of lofts and condos and actually like, like big houses. Like, like I say, it's a fashion show. Every day you step out, you gotta be looking presentable. Like, ain't no, really ain't no basketball shorts, none of that. Like, they weren't doing that no more. Like, niggas be coming outside like dressed in designer just to go to the store, just to go buy some more clothes, or just to walk around, just to go hustling. And that was like the first song that just took out. We were just really just living what we was talking about. You know the name, you know he's doing music, but I was never, as a DJ, by, by fault, I wasn't playing the music. And somebody came to me and, and tapped me on the shoulder like, why are you not playing Trap and Design at the time, which was one of the biggest street records. You know, all the strip clubs had it, it was popping. And I, was, I couldn't even answer the guy, I was like, uh, you know what, I don't know. Immediately I started playing and I saw the reaction because I was in a, one of the biggest clubs in the market. So I saw the reaction, I, I hit him on the horn like, yo, I've been slipping, but I'm not slipping no more. Whatever you need from me, I got you. I see what it is now. And that day forth, I saw yellow everywhere I went. I'm putting it like this. If I was from Atlanta, Trap and Designer would have been a death on me at that time period. Me being in another market, it would have blew me bigger than what I was like coming from Dallas. That's on me. He well, he didn't think he was gonna take off like that, but I did. I always had the faith in him. I always pushed him, you know, don't give up. Just keep going or whatever the case may be. And when I would hear it and I'd be like, oh, that's a good one. That's on me, got him to where I'm at. It really just impact like I know like for a fact, like you get one here, you'll be on the road for about two years straight. When he did the mixtape, um, he called me, he's like, yo, I'm gonna come up there and I wanna I wanna play the mixtape for you and I wanna play it live on the radio. So um, he did that, and he was like, "This that motherfucker right here, that motherfucker, that motherfucker, hey, fuck, hey, fuck with that motherfucker right there." So you know me, yeah, nigga, everybody fuck with everything. You know what I'm saying? Because you know I hear it all the time. But then all of a sudden, I felt the wave. I started seeing this shit all on Snapchat. I started seeing that shit pop up. I'm like, damn, shit might be motherfucker might be fucking with that motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? Like. We did it, we did it like we do, like we was doing every video at that time. We do a scene a day. It probably took us four weeks to shoot the video because we was doing a scene, one scene every week. So we were just coming up, when we think of something, we'll shoot that scene. That's why you see every scene he got on different outfit and stuff like that because it was all different days. Well, it took like three, four months to get a million views, but then right after it hit a million, it just started jumping like three million, five million, just started jumping up. Shit, so like, 150 right now. It might be the biggest song to ever come out of Dallas. Anthem. Um, timing is everything. And, and when it dropped, I knew at that point it was a rap. I, meaning, he's out of here. You know, it was one of those things where, you know, when I got my personal friends like the DJ Clues, the DJ Selfs, calling me like, yo, send me the That's On Me record. I ain't got it yet. Or oh, I ain't got the clean version for radio yet and I want to play it. I knew it was out of there. Just out that song, I made M's off that thing. Like, it really, like, people started knowing who I was. They was taking into who I am. They seeing, seeing the shag cut, knowing that I ain't from there. That's why I purposely kept the shag cut, because I want y'all to know we from Dallas. Like, we ain't from nowhere else. It just really just put me, like, in another position to where I ain't gotta go back to the streets or I ain't just gotta worry about nothing no more. That's on me, he, he told me, like, yo, that's that motherfucker. Got out the sign on me. I still have anxiety right now about this, but when he called and told me he was shot, I told him to hang in there, don't give up. I remember they started popping. I started feeling it a little bit, but then I just started instantly praying or whatever, and the cost word out or whatever. Multiple agencies are investigating the early morning shooting of a man driving on the Sam Rayburn tollway. That gunfire happening on that tollway about 3.30 this morning. Police identifying the victim as 26-year-old Ella Beasy. I was driving. 
like the car crash and like when it happened like it wasn't like I seen it coming like it came unexpectedly so I couldn't react the way I wanted to react so when I was driving they started doing it I kind of like did like this and then it like sh like it hit one hit in my elbow like shattered it that's why I, like the car swerved out cause like the, my arm just went dead like as soon as it happened and I ain't called the police I had called my mom like hey man they just shot me up he didn't know where he was he just knew he was on the freeway and I'm asking him, like, where are you? Lead me to you. So he was talking. I can hear him, like, his breath. He was talking to me, but you can tell he was getting, like, weak or whatever. So I'm like, just tell me, where are you? And he said, Ma, I don't know. Well, that's it. I was just praying. I was just like, shit, you can't get it. You got a family disappearing on you. got your little boy. Cause my little boy had, was just born. Like, my little boy wasn't even a year old yet. When his mother, when Kim called me and said, they shot up my baby. It was like everything came back from when his dad got killed. I didn't know what to expect. I was tense, uh, anxious. I couldn't get to the hospital quick enough. When I got there, I really didn't want to go in because I didn't want to hear what I uh, see. Like, I was just mad that I didn't get to the gun because I felt like, at least let me shoot back. Let me let y'all know what's going on. You know what I'm saying? Like, like y'all hit me, let me hit y'all. Basically, you know what I'm saying? That was my whole thing, like, get to the gun. I couldn't find the gun. Like, and then when I couldn't find the gun, I'ma just on some shit like, man, you better get up out of here before these niggas come back and start shooting some up. Police say 26-year-old DeAndre Conway was shot three times and was still conscious and breathing when he was transported to a nearby hospital. Police say more than a dozen rounds were fired into Conway's vehicle. In the hospital watching, they were like, it's gonna come on. Chris is on side of him, he's sneaking videos and everything. <laughs> when I was telling the doctors, because the doctors, they were like, like a, they, they didn't know who I was, but they knew I had to be somebody. Y'all looking at the wolves? That's me. Mm -hmm. I, I would remember, like, when I used to see, see stuff on TV, they were like, a lot of people panic, and that's when they kill themselves. You know what I'm saying? They Like, they go into a panic, that's when they die. Like, they go into a panic, that's when they die. Right. The motherfucker just, it's like a golden gun. It's, it's like, um, I trademark. Like, Shay's been around forever, still around. Like, I've been having mine since like the eighth grade. The motherfucker ain't went nowhere. Everybody in Dallas basically didn't hate that motherfucker. You from Dallas? I mean, I don't know. A lot of motherfuckers hate it, but shit, you can say it because we the only motherfuckers still wearing it. And people, you know what I'm saying? Like, Kanye tried to grow that motherfucker, but it's Dallas, though. Dallas is a good money city. You gotta carry yourself like that. No lame shit, but get money. And Yellow represented that. Anyway, I'm betting on myself. That's on me. There's nothing else. And that shit resonated with a lot of motherfuckers. Some people may not want to accept it, but that nigga's the face of Dallas. Dallas really just cling on to, they cling on to the, the flashy shit too, but. After that, you know what I mean? They're gonna wanna know what type of person you are to stay. He's the face of the city. He's the one that's setting the tone now. Uh, and he's leading the way. It's just a new renaissance, you know, of rap music here in Dallas. And this hasn't happened for almost a decade. And he's the one that's broken through. And he's really representing the culture across the country and across the world. Let the people speak. If that's what they want to label, we're going to label, we're going to run with it. I, I appreciate it, though, because, you know, it, it's Dallas, it's like, it's a, it's a hard market to get up out of. You know, like, like I tell people all the time, if you made it out of Dallas, you got it out the mud, because we ain't have the resources like everybody did. I feel like other, others have tried to do what he's doing, to some extent. Again, I feel like what he's done is organically cornerstone the market, you know, young gatekeeper, the mayor, whatever you want to whatever you want to deem him as, he's bridging that gap. He's been one of the sparks that has kind of lit this whole Dallas movement. People are talking about BZ, you know? Um, not just locally, not just regionally, but nationally. And I mean, he's had, you know how hard it is? It's hard to get a number one record. I'm just do me. I don't even look at stuff like that. A lot of stuff don't, I don't even let get to me like pressure or stuff that people be excited about. I don't really too much be excited about it. Like, I, I don't know. I just be looking 
like, okay, I got that accomplished, like, what's next? For people of his nature to say it and everybody just saying it, like, they mean a lot because you got you to gotta do a lot to earn that title. They ain't just going around giving that title. Everybody want to be the king of Dallas. Everybody want to beat the woo-woo. They want to have their own title. But when somebody, the, the streets actually put that on your back, you got to respect it. Got out the sign on me. That's on me, baby.